Well, it's Monday morning, the day after the ABQ type out uh, that we had on Sunday, April 22nd. And it was a great event at Penny Smith's paper at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. We had a lot of people show up. It was a beautiful day. You know, the previous two weeks had been kind of really windy and gusty. It's kind of springtime unsettled weather, but yesterday was a beautiful day. Um, I have all my typewriters here that I offloaded yesterday evening after the type out. I need to clean some of them up. Uh, so this was an outdoor event in the breezeway of the strip mall where Penny Smith's paper is located. And it was springtime and uh, Penny Smith's paper is located in the Rio Grande Valley of Albuquerque where all the cottonwood trees are, the Rio Grande cottonwoods. And they were all in bloom yesterday, which means all the little cottonwood seeds, cotton-like little things were floating around in the air. And so my typewriters probably have a bunch of little cottonwood seeds in them that I need to clean up. So I'm going to do that this morning, take a vacuum and an air compressor and blow them out and clean them up. And, but uh, in the meantime, I shot a little bit of video. Well, look what we have here. We have a Subaru full of typewriters. Yes, I'm going to the type out. The typewriter gathering here in Albuquerque. Come along, will you? I inherited this from my stepdad. Oh, you did? Yeah, he bought it new years and years ago. He was, you know, probably back in the 40s, I would say. Wow. And, uh, or early, I don't know, I would say the 40s, early 50s. And he was, uh, this was his typewriter, but he never, hardly ever used it. He would do it only if he wrote letters. Right, right. And, uh, and he was a, a very meticulous person. And so he always, everything he had was in perfect condition and well maintained. Oh. And so he took care of this and eventually he uh, got old and passed on and I inherited it. I was a journalist and reporter and back in the 70s I went to apply for a, a reporting job at a newspaper up in northeastern Vermont and I walked into the newsroom and clank, 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 clank. everybody's hacking away and what they usually, the editor usually did is he would, somebody would come by to apply for a job and he'd say, go over to that typewriter and type your resume. Oh. So, you know, to prove that they could type. Right, they right. compose on the typewriter. That's good. But for some reason, he didn't do that to me. He just hired me on the spot. And uh, I'd, I'd written some magazine articles and I think that impressed him. And uh, anyway, he said, no, you know, you're hired. And, which is good because I didn't know how to type. <laughs> <laughs> and I went home, I had it two weeks before I started the so job. So you went in a crash course? <laughs> <laughs> Did but you I, use this machine? Oh no, 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 I used, I had a Smith Corona. Yeah. And, and that was, I liked that. And then, you know, in the newspaper they had, they gave you, you know, you had a typewriter, it was, you know, like a Ford pickup. Or yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a workhorse machine. It was a workhorse machine. Yeah. And it was fun. Very yeah. good. But, and I got to where I really liked it. You know, it's, I got to be pretty fast. And, um, and it's interesting because I'm not fast anymore on an electronic keyboard. Oh. Not at all. In fact, I can't type five words without making a mistake. But, you know, it's yeah. an electronic thing, so you right. just back it up and Go correct it, but it's really slow. Yeah. Yes, I write poetry. Oh, wonderful. Do you mind if I... Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Do you do you like to do poetry readings? No, I need to though. I'm really shy, but that is something that I need to do. I'm uh, I've been building myself up for it for like a year, and I think I just need to do it. Hi, my name is Roger Gamble, and uh, this typewriter that I have here is a Wilding TW100. Ah. 
and it is, uh, as you might as you might be able to tell, it's a Silver Seiko manufacturer, and I uh, purchased it here locally from someone whose husband had been stationed in the UK, so that's where they bought it. It's a pretty much of a, a base model. There's no there's no tabs. It's a uh, carriage shift. Well, I started uh, collecting after I saw the movie California Typewriter, and uh, it I felt that uh, collect, that that typewriters were uh, just sort of a, a natural uh, expression of my uh, occasional dissatisfaction with uh, you know the digital uh, lifestyle, as it were, and social media and um, ideas that get lost forever and uh, I uh, I'm kind of a I like to, to, to write things out by hand and I have a feeling that my that I have good ideas that come from my brain through to my hand and I also think that good ideas come from my hands to the typewriter so uh, I'm a, I, I am a hopefully a budding writer but um, not yet published um, I'm in I'm in school right now and uh, I just think this, this this typewriter is a is an amazing little piece of machinery and it, and it reminds me of uh, a sewing machine actually it kind of has the sound of a sewing machine machine and it, it has kind of almost a high-pitched whine when it gets going. Well my first typewriter was a Olympia SM9 and I purchased that basically on the strength of an online recommendation from another typewriter collector uh, who had uh, extolled the virtues of, of uh, you know the, the the German design and the good quality of the, the machine, um, and I really also like the European makes because they tend to put the backspace on the right hand side, <laughs> yeah. and it's difficult for me to to use the backspace if it's on the left. However, maybe that is a that is a future skill that I would like to like to have learned. Um, because I, I, I also see typing as kind of a kind of a therapeutic uh, stress release, where it uh, where it is a discipline. Typing is a discipline. It's not just uh, a means to an end, but it's an end in itself. And um, I, get, I, I just feel relaxed whenever I uh, type for a while. Wow, that's good. So <laughs> how many machines do you have in your collection? I have about I have about eight machines. So that makes you a collector. <laughs> yes. And do you see new machines all the time that you'd like to get? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, in fact, just about every one of the machines that are here yeah. in the type yeah. out, I, I would like to have for myself. Oh yeah, I'm that way too. <laughs> I think the next machine, though, that I would really like to have if I can find one in reasonably good condition is a let uh, an Olivetti let letter of 32 I typed on that thing and it's got a wonderful action and it's got a short throw and it's got it's very nice and tight and it's very forgiving I am in a in a social media group that uh, publishes short uh, that that types short poems and uh, puts them on Facebook so I I, I, I think I'm uh, a pretty decent and poem writer. I found some uh, um, some old advertisements online from the 90s from an office uh, equipment store in the UK that was called Wilding, and it had this same logo. And uh, they they dealt with uh, Olivetti typewriters, and Olivetti used to have a computer. And so I, I assumed that this was a, a store brand of. Uh, of, of Silver Seiko manufacture. Well, I, you know, I was finishing up a book, and I kept getting distracted well, when I when I would work on it at the UNM library, and uh, when I when I pulled out 
um, yeah. a typewriter. Yeah, what um, I just I, I stopped somewhere, and there was one there, and I typed, and I, and I kept writing, uh, and it, the pages kept flowing out. Yeah. So then I, I kept looking. And at first, my initial reaction was not by a typewriter, but by something electronic yeah. that mimicked the typewriter. I mean, the idea of buying a typewriter hadn't, hadn't come around yeah. to. Yeah. So I kept looking at different uh, keyboards that mimic typewriters. I looked at uh, different new technologies that were were not. Um, or distraction free and so slowly I eventually got to times like well, why am I wasting my time here? And so I just get a typewriter. Well the first one I got was uh, a model that was uh, Rod Sterling used. It was a uh, an old, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a larger, um, it's not portable. It's, it's something that I, I, when I bought it, I immediately, that's how I found you because I looked to see well how could I refurbish uh, typewriters and it up. And then, I, and then a lot of what you wrote, what you said on your blog, or the blog, was um, using Q-tips, you know, that sort of thing, cleaning out the letters, and so I bought that. And then I got another uh, Lectura 32, like one I have here, but it was cursive. And so, I didn't, so then I was hooked. Like, yeah, right. Then I got to get another one that was, an extra, that was not a cursive. And so I started looking, and I started looking to see what type of typewriters were famous with, uh, with various writers. So either Ernest Hemingway or uh, Eudora Welt. Any other writers like that, and so what I do um, um, for a living is I, I write stories every day, and it's electronic, and so we, it's, it's constantly fast moving for the Associated Press. So when I'm writing something, as I'm working on a book or do other personal, I want some more where I can go back and, and edit. And for the AP or any other journalism things I do. Um, that it just have to be quick and fast, oh, yeah. and so right. uh, and that's great. That's great for that. But for something that you you want more care to, that you got to take time, to, that doesn't need to go on the wire that day or within ten minutes. Uh, this using a typewriter allows you to just flow the, the creative flows out. Yeah. Let it get on the page, and then go back to it and edit it um, with care. Right. It's it's almost like a, you're doing a, a, another piece of art. Right. 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 And, and, and uh, journalism is one way. It's fast. You got to get it fast, accurate, get it out. But with uh, this type of writing, it, it takes much more of a, an artistic flavor to it. So I took this, I was uh, on a speaking tour in, uh, well, I, I gave a lecture out in Durham, um, England, and I was invited by the uh, Duke University, and to going out there, to, when I was, I was working, I wanted to finish up what I was going to say, I took my lecture, this, this lecture 32, out, and I, I took it to Europe, and I carried it, and I typed my lecture on it. And so the other uh, scholars were wanting to know what how the, what this thing was, machine was, and so we we're fascinated. I had to go through customs. Everybody, all the custom folks in, in England were really fascinated. And I took it to Paris. I took it to um, Cafe de Flore where. James Baldwin and Richard Wright wrote, and just just took it and wrote it, and, and everybody gave, gave a second look about it. And then, uh, of course, there were some waiters like, "Oh, here you go, here's another typewriter friend." Yeah. We see this so often, uh, and so that was a really great experience to take it there. When I was there, I, I wrote a piece about uh, Af the African American uh, past in Paris. Uh, Paris has played a big role in uh, American black thought, from James Baldwin all the way to uh, Richard Wright, yes. um, various artists. Um, who went to Paris, especially in the 1940s, 30s, 1940s, who uh, wanted to basically get away from the racism of the United States at the time. Right. So I took that and I started making notes and writing, and, and the piece became a, a later a travel piece later around the, the Associated Press. Well, very good. That's exciting. Yeah. And I was so tempted on that that nine, ten hour trip back to the States yeah. to pull this out yeah, on, a, on a plane. You weren't sure if you were yeah. going to do it, right? Yeah, I wasn't sure, especially if it was like 4 in the morning. Time right, right. The people are trying to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> but it was tempting. Yeah. So, so. Well, thanks, Russell. Thanks for having me here. Thank I appreciate you. it. You thanks bet. for this event. Well, hi, Joe. We're here at the at the Penny Smiths down here in, on Rio Grande. The third, what is it, the third biannual, yeah, semi-annual? Biannual, semi-annual disorganized type in. Right yeah, on. Or type out. <laughs> Always glad to be here. Yes, glad to have you. Well, uh, uh, you know, along with uh, typewriters, every off every good office had to have a stapler. Oh, yeah. And my favorite stapler, and a favorite of a lot of other people, are the Bates ah. wire staplers. And the, the Bates wire staplers would they take a, a brass wire, run it through the, the machine, push it through here as you press down it would not only advance the wire but then it would crimp it and cut it at the same time ah. producing a tiny brass 
staple that would never rust. It was small. Our Arch archivists loved them because you, you could pack a lot of documents into a small space. Is there brass, not, not steel? Steel. Yeah, yeah. And so I, today I brought a, a, a one of pretty much every model that they made. This is the Model A. This was the first one they brought out back in the mid-20s. It used uh, 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 the same mechanism. Yeah, the mechanism had evolved in design over the years, but it's essentially the same way they made them. Bates was not the only company that made wire staplers, but they were the most, they were the broadest sold. I have, this is a Model A, this is an early Model B, this is a mid Model B, and this is a late Model B, and then this is the last one they made, Model C. They stopped making these about the mid, the late 60s, they stopped making these. In, during each of the eras, from the 20s to the 60s, these were fairly expensive to, to, to purchase. In 1927, this machine was $9.95, which was a lot of money in the, yeah. in, the, in the 20s. Through the Depression, the price still held. During the pre Depression, this machine and also this machine would have been $12 to $15, wow. which was a good, yeah. you know, a good person's wages back yeah. in the Depression. Yeah. During the war, when um, uh, brass became uh, uh, scarce or uh, used for the war effort, they brought it, they made wire out of steel. Oh. Not quite as good, and of course they went back to brass right away, right. but this is a war era, or World War II era wow. spool of, 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 of wire. Wow, cool. The machines today, you can pick these up, uh, except for the Model A, all of these machines I haven't paid more than fifteen dollars a piece for it. Wow. In most cases, they include the that'll include some wire. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, there are folks out there that'll put wire back on a spool. So if you find one with a spool, you don't need to worry. You can still get what you can still get wire for it. But if you usually, I can find one of these model C's for anywhere between fifteen and twenty dollars. Wow. Which was actually half the price of what it was new. Yes, yeah. And they work, they work perfectly, beautifully, every yeah. time. They're, wow. They, yeah. So they, they, they were made to last, obviously, this one, this one is 80 years old and it works just as well as it did the day it was, it was, it was made. So that was, that was, that's the Bates wire stapler. Very cool. The biggest problem is corrosion and rust almost with everything. This one is in particularly good shape. This side has seen a little more wear than wear than this side. But this one is about the best example Model A that I've ever found. The the the, the other factor is can you read the the name on the knob? In some of these the na the, the name has virtually worn off, okay? Mm -hmm. But this one for for being as old as it is, a Model A uh, that is really a super, superb condition. The handles are not really replaceable. Uh, once they wear off, they're, they're, you're, that's pretty much the way it is. The other thing is in the early models, uh, there was a set of tweezers to help load the wire. Oh, yes. So they're very rare with the, with the tweezers. You very seldom find them with the, with the tweezers. This model I happen oh, to find with, yes. the, with the tweezers. Uh, this one here, the uh, mid Model C also with the tweezers. But as they moved along, this is the late Model B, no tweezers. Mm. They didn't need them. Oh, I see. They had the mechanism perfected so that you didn't need tweezers anymore. Wow. Okay, so from this point on, yeah. the, 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 they, didn't, they didn't need the tweezers. But uh, that's an, so that's another factor. Very cool. You'll find a lot of these machines in all of these eras, heavily used. These were these were machines that were used in an office every day. They were used hard. They were uh, a lot of times you find them with a lot of corrosion. And Bates during its its time period did a lot of different finishes. Here we have a olive drab type finish, almost kind of like a an army mm -hmm. type type finish. Yeah. I've seen examples of the Model A and the early Model B that are just totally covered in corrosion and mm. rust. Really, really poor condition. Later on, they tried a chrome base 
Mm, yeah. And I've seen these where there's been there's been a lot of pitting and a lot of corrosion. See, when you when you're looking at on eBay uh, and and you're c collecting these, and these are not hard to find. These are very very common, but getting them in 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 good condition is 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 what. But I've found them in absolutely terrible condition with the handles missing or replaced by a piece of wood and they still function. So if you want a wire stapler, uh, almost anyone can be coaxed back into to, to, to service if you really want a nice wire stapler. They are fun to use. They, they always work. They're great to use. You can still, you can still find, if you can find the the, with with a, a bit of wire left on the spool, then that's that's even better. This one's wired. To, you can see that it's already wired. So right. the the you, to replace the spool, you would pull this up, and this whole thing is like wow. a cartridge. Exactly. It pops in. Oh, wow. The early ones, it was just a round spool. Right, and you had to, f and you had to fit it in there. Fit it, in there. It, it was friction fit oh, I see. In, in there. Oh, I see. Huh. Here's a. Oh, ah, so just like you have typewriter ribbon collectors, there are Bates wire spool collectors, and yes, wow. and that's a Model A. Oh, and that's wow. a, that's the this that's the this thing. is the this is the one that fit. Yeah. Oh wow, very cool. And still has the paper wrapping. Oh nice. Very cool. It's never been this thing. This is this spool has never been out of this tin. Wow. Very cool. Wow. Ninety years, almost. Ninety, 90 years. years. A lot of us stapler aficionados think of these as the as the the best the best staplers ever made. These were really the best staplers ever made, uh, and um, they really are special and unique uh, American manufacture. Very good. Genuine, all American made. When you need to join pieces of paper together, this is what you need. This is what you need. Yeah. I use one at work. And, uh, Fantastic. Yeah. It's not, it's, it, I have one, you know, obviously you get them yeah. in, I've got, you know, some of these, I've got some that are in just absolutely miserable condition. The handle's been, the handle's a piece of wood or not a, not at all, or a washer, somebody's, somebody's bolted a washer onto the <laughs> on or something right. just to keep it just to keep it going yeah and um, uh, and it still works oh, wow. little oil put a little oil and yeah works, works great a beautiful stapler from a uh, from a good old American manufacturer well I might be looking for one of these myself now <laughs> you you're an enabler <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Well, Thank I appreciate you. that. <laughs> <laughs>sure had a fun time at this uh, type out and this is the third one that I've held in Albuquerque and uh, they get better each time we do it during the uh, preparations for this uh, gathering last week I had the sudden inspiration after going through all my typewriters and figuring out which ones I was going to be using at the type out I had this sudden inspiration that I needed to give away a typewriter and so I held a little drawing for this Smith Corona Cougar made in England. So we had a winner of the uh, typewriter. It was, in fact, Roger Gamble. And uh, so congratulations, Roger. That was a, a fun little gathering. Uh, thank you for participating. You know, we had a lot of people show up and my fellow conspirator, Kevin Kittle, uh, and his wife were so nice to help me prepare and conduct uh, this uh, gathering. It was uh, one of those things where it's difficult for me sometimes to find the time to shoot video, take still photographs, and whenever some new person comes to the uh, table to greet them and let them know what's going on and 
get them set in front of a typewriter. So it's kind of a busy time. I didn't shoot quite as much footage as I would have liked to. I uh, attempted to conduct an interview with a poet, a lady who showed up with a bunch of little uh, one-line poems that she had typed on cards. And for some reason, my camera, <laughs> when I started the footage, the recording, I thought I'd started it, was actually stopped. And when I finished the so-called recording, I actually started it and got a bunch of shots of my feet. So I didn't get the interview of that lady, and I apologize for that. But uh, anyway, this was a great meeting. Um, we do plan on having another large public typewriter gathering at Penny Smith's paper this uh, coming October of 2018, uh, date and time pending. But uh, I also would like to get maybe a little more informal, uh, more frequent gathering uh, together, maybe at a local brewery or something like that. So stay tuned for that. Well, in any event, thank you all, you all of you who participated in the Type Out. And if you are living in another town and you haven't been to a typewriter gathering, a public typewriter gathering, and you have a, a small collection of typewriters, maybe you should consider organizing one yourself in your town. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day. Oh, <laughs>